Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Our God is an awesome God. I, I did talk about, um, you know, four points on uh, our message on, 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 on this day, glory to God, about um, spiritual gifts. Today we want to, to demonstrate these spiritual gifts, you know, because it's one thing to teach some things, another thing to, 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 to demonstrate them, them spiritual gifts. Without any further delay, let's turn our Bibles to First Corinthians at all. So how were the gifts demonstrated in, in the life of Jesus? How do we demonstrate these gifts? Because anything we learn, we need to put it to work, put it to practice. The Bible says, be doers of the word, not just the hearers. The, the one that hears and doesn't do. It says, it's like a person who looks at himself in the mirror, then he forgets how he looks like. Glory to God. It says, be doers of the word. So we have to demonstrate, we have to see what stopped these gifts from operating. How do we tap into these gifts? How do we, you know, why is it necessary? I, I've got some scriptures in 1 Corinthians 12 that I want to read. Verse 1, which is very important. Now about spiritual gifts, the special endowment given by the Holy Spirit. I want you to take note. I love the amplifies when it amplifies it. It says we have special endowments given to us by the Holy Spirit. About spiritual gifts, special endowments, right? Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be uninformed. Now, the King James says, I don't want you to be ignorant. So don't be ignorant of spiritual gifts. That's what Paul is saying. Listen, don't be ignorant. There is special endowments, special gifts, spiritual gifts. Um, the New Living Translation says, now about spiritual abilities, spiritual abilities. Don't be, don't, don't misunderstand. Don't misunderstand. Don't be ignorant. Spiritual Abilities. God has given us spiritual abilities, and sometimes we do not see the spiritual abilities. Now let's go. Let's go there and find out what are they. Now, 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 what are they? Let's look at verse um, verse six. There. And there are distinctive, distinctive ways of working to accomplish things. I want you to take note. There are distinctive, distinctive ways of working to accomplish things. Right distinctive ways to accomplish things. Okay. So the first thing that he says is don't be ignorant. Then now he's talking about accomplishing things. Now when he's talking about accomplishing things, what is he talking about? Glory to God. Accomplishing what? <laughs> so I need to know. Accomplishing things. There are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things. But it is the same spirit who produces all things in all believers. I like what he's saying. It says, it is the same God who produces all things in all believers, inspiring, energizing, and empowering them. That is why Paul is saying, don't be ignorant of these things. Because when you are ignorant, what's this? the distinctive ways of accomplishing all things won't be there. You find that we start struggling, we start suffering, and yet God is looking at us and says, why are you doing that? Why are you still struggling there? Why are you still stuck? Right? Because I did not create you to be stuck. You know, when we, we study the word of God, you discover, I love um, what we're reading today, church, Romans, uh, Galatians 5, uh, 13 and Galatians 5, 1. It says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Right? That, that freedom is there. When we said yes to Jesus Christ, we cannot be in bondage. No. When we find ourselves in bondage, no. We have not come to the revelation of the distinctive ways of accomplishing things. It means we, we have become ignorant, right, of spiritual abilities that have been given to us, right? So that is, 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 is writing this. Now, let, 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 let's go deeper. Now, and there are distinctive varieties of ministries, varieties, distinctive, different kinds, glory to God, diverse, of ministries and service. So if I'm ignorant of these different kinds or diverse or varieties of ministries, then that freedom that God has given to me, I will be here in my prayer closing. I'm praying. Lord, if you could move. And God is like, no, no. I've already given. 
a diversity of gifts, different kinds of gifts, to cause you to operate and to live in, in your freedom. See, there, there, there is an enemy that does not want you to be in freedom. In the way he operates, he wants you alone to be ignorant of what has already been given to you, the gifts of the Spirit, things that are in you, that are in other believers. So if you are ignorant of that law, you're going to start struggling in your finances, you're going to start struggling in your relationships, you're going to start struggling in your in your workplace, that even when I'm releasing, I'm getting ahead of myself, when I'm releasing a word of knowledge, that it's time for you to come out of this work, it's time for you to come out of this neighborhood, that's the gift of the word of knowledge. And you are not hearing, because you've become ignorant of what I am saying to you, when you become ignorant, then you find yourself in an environment where you should not be at, and then you die. Right? Let's go deeper. We'll come back with this. <laughs> Verse 7. <laughs> but to each one, to each one, that is the body of Christ now, that's you as a believer. Don't see yourself when you go to church, go to church, I hear this statement, when you go to a place of fellowship with other believers, don't see yourself as you don't have anything to offer, you just you go there, you sit down, no. Find out, Lord, what is it? What is it that is inside? Because that's where verse 7 comes in. But to each one is given the, the manifestation of the Spirit. He says, there is a manifestation of the Spirit that has been given to, 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 to the body of Christ, the glory to God. It's been given to us. But if we are now ignorant, that freedom, we are not seeing that freedom, right? Right, let, let, let us go. The manifestation of the Spirit. I like the Amplified, what it says. The spiritual illumination and the enabling of the Holy Spirit, the spiritual illumination. Imagine if God spiritually illuminates you in the challenge that you are facing right now. The example, the perfect example is the example of Naomi and Ruth. I always love this story. I always go back to it. The story of Naomi and Ruth, things were bad. They were broke. They had nothing. But that spiritual illumination you see, he started working inside of Naomi. That was the gift. See, Ruth was not ignorant of that gift. She saw it. She left everything to pursue after the gift. Your people will be my people. Where you die, that is where I am going to die. Your God is going to be my God. She was not ignorant. You see, you, 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 you have to see the gift in a person. You have to have that spiritual illumination. That's why sometimes the prayer to pray, Lord, illuminate me, enlighten me, open my eyes that I can see that which is around me. Because if my eyes are closed, I will not see. You can preach as a preacher with eyes closed. Yet there is a grandmother there that carries something that can change the dynamics of your family. You can sing as a praise and worship singer. Like, oh, when I sing, you know, I've got a gift of singing and they've called me to sing. Which is good, which is great. And miss somebody who might be in the choir who doesn't have that eloquent voice like you, but they carry an anointing that even when they sing that song, now it's the gift. Now they have submitted that thing to the Holy Spirit. You, it's a talent. There's a great difference between the gift of the Spirit and the talent. You can quote a scripture reading from poetically and people clap for you. And then somebody can read the same scripture without even having a, a decent education. Instead of clapping, they are all on the floor, they are weeping. That is the illumination that we are talking about. That is the illumination that Ruth had when she saw what was in Naomi, when Naomi had lost everything that she had. That's what changed a life. About spiritual gifts, don't be ignorant. 
The gifts have been given to people. They are in people. Sometimes the people are, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, we have this treasure in Eden vessel. In Eden vessel. That the excellency of the power might be of God. The gift is in an Eden vessel. But what is needed is illumination, enlightenment, that I should not be ignorant. I should see it when I see that gift in life. For it to be demonstrated in my life, I need to say goodbye to more. I might need to say goodbye to some friends. I might need to say goodbye to the things that I've been doing so that I can press ahead, pursue, and lay hold of that gift. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 says something powerful. What does it say? Verse 1, not verse 2. It says, pursue after spiritual gifts. So when God says pursue after something, he says, listen, when you are to pursue after something, it, it means you, you have to go after it. You have to run after it. That is what Ruth did. She pursued. She went. Hope I went back. But Ruth decided, I'm pressing ahead. I'm going. Because I see she had illumination. She saw what was in the, what she needed. Right. Enlightenment. Despite the dysfunction, despite what is happening, because he said, no, my destiny is tied up with something that is inside of you. You are an even vessel, but there is something that I see, that treasure that is inside of you. That is what I'm pursuing. You don't have to like somebody. You know, you don't have to, they don't have to come from where you come from. But when you know that your destiny is tied up with somebody else, how, how, how willing are you to let go of everything to pursue after that? About spiritual gifts, don't be ignorant. Because gifts is not going to just float in the atmosphere. Well, this is the New Testament. Uh, well, God is, you know, all of us, we can uh, just enter and just get to God. That's a lie. That is the biggest lie that the church has been telling. No, God has anointed people. He has sent people. Glory to God. And sometimes you have to bow yourself before a person. You have to go and save that person to get what is inside of them. And when God puts something inside of a person and you decide, no, God is going to just give it to me. I hear I'm going to be able to shut That's ignorance running up there. It is in a person. It is how you cooperate with them. It's how you're going to place yourself under them. It is how you're going to... They might be rough. They might be tough. They might not... You know, you know nationality-wise, they might not be like, you know, be gentle and kind, come from where you come from. But it is your own responsibility to begin to pursue, to say, listen, where you die, that's where I die. What you eat, that's what I'm going to eat. You might abuse me, you might treat me like a carpet, but I know what is inside of you. I want to pull it out of you, glory to God. That is how you get to manifest the gifts of the Spirit. I says, oh, no, 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 no. Freely we receive, freely we give. Yeah, freely we receive, freely we give. But to, 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 to get to get the gifts, to go for them, there is a pursuing, there is a stripping off of my own pride. There is a stripping off of, my, of myself that, yeah, I might not like a Nigerian, I might not like a Kenyan, I might not like a Caribbean, I might not like a Zimbabwean, I might not like a Shona, I might not like a Devil, I might not like that woman, but that woman has something that I want. How did she raise all those kids by yourself and now they that one is a lawyer that one is a doctor how did that person get that marriage how come there is something inside of them i'm willing to forsake everything to pursue for each one of us has been given what am i willing to do to pursue after because the thing that we sometimes talk about you know if god wants you to to have these things, you know, you just want to have them. Or you just lift up your hand, just receive by faith, receive by faith, my sister, receive by faith. No, sometimes you need to step out. You know, you need to crawl on the floor. 
the healing gift i'm getting ahead of myself but anyway that's cool that's great the healing gift is on jesus fringes is on the garment glory to god you heard there is a preacher who has a healing gift he carries a healing gift you heard that glory to god you see that it is there you've been bleeding for the past 12 years and things have not been working well you can't be sitting at all <laughs> you know what will be will be sara sara no it will not happen see we have this mindset that we have gathered that we have carried as god's children we come to a place where we think that well god is sovereign you know if he wants me to receive this i can receive it no absolutely not god is sovereign right but he says in hebrews 11 verse 6 without faith it's impossible it is it is impossible without faith it is impossible i want to to, to take it again without faith it is impossible without faith it is impossible it is absolutely impossible it cannot be done without faith it's impossible to please god god cannot be pleased without faith me sitting idly years ago god is sovereign yes god is sovereign It's already done. Yes, God has already done it in the spirit realm. The blessing is already there. It is done. It is sacred. It is there. It, Jesus, when he hung on the cross, he said it is finished. But to get a hold of that which is finished, to bring it from heaven and bring it to physical manifestation, there are people that carry certain gifts that I might need to pursue after. I might need to step out of my house because without faith, it's impossible to please God. He, he, he that cometh to God, he that cometh to God must, must, must come believing, believing that he is a reward of them that diligence, diligence, diligence. See, we have been raised to think that spiritual things just happen. that they will just jump on you this spiritual gift just jump on you like a bandit no they don't there is a pursuing there is a consecration there is a coming out there is an illumination there is an enlightenment there is a, a place of humility humble my lord <laughs> If I don't humble myself here this this marriage will be destroyed if I don't humble myself here this finances are never going to change if I don't humble myself here I might die and leave uh, my, my, my 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 children as orphans if I don't humble myself many have died because they could not pursue you see faith in pursuing and uh, not being ignorant the, you see faith is the solution that will begin to connect us to the place of enlightenment to be enlightened so that we can know what god has already provided for the body of christ that we can see that we can know it then we can manifest it then we can walk in it you know when god speaks what he says it might not make sense it should never really make sense because it's spiritual it says people struggle i say yeah there's pride and what this is pride the long the solution will be there but it's pride now, when you're struggling doing something who have you gone and asked how do i work out on my finances it says you find people praying ah shangara ba shangara ba shangara the gift is there have you asked anybody have you asked? you have not because you ask not about spiritual gifts don't be ignorant glory to there will be a gift of wisdom in that church and that sister you don't like hey fact the way she dresses summer hat autumn scarf winter blouse and spring skirt you are thinking summer autumn winter spring you know you are like decorated like father christmas what exactly can you tell me so you are no longer seeing what is inside that can help you in your finances because you were not diligently seeking god you actually had an idea of if god is to work he has to work with somebody from fellow countrymen people that i know that one is so soft that one is so nice like pastor long you know when somebody is so nice you know then i can listen to them so when somebody is rough and tough right is no not god they don't exercise spirit of gentleness there are some people that carry gifts but uh, they are dressing and their mannerism might not be good but when you are pursuing after god you are seeking after god god begins to reveal 
back to what we talked about, the treasure that is inside. The treasure that is inside. You have to come to the revelation of what is inside of a person. Glory to God. When you come to that revelation of what is inside that, you begin to see the full manifestation of that gift even in your life. Glory to Jesus. Because his plan and purpose is this. When I'm not ignorant, that which I'm not ignorant of, it is that which begins to work in my life. It is that which begins to change and transform me. Glory to God. I begin to see the glory of God in my life. I begin to see it. Now, let's go deeper and round up this thing. <laughs> Verse 8. To one is given through the Holy Spirit the power to speak the message of wisdom. That is the spirit of wisdom. To another, the power to express the word of knowledge and to and, and understand according to the same spirit, the word of knowledge. To another, wonder waking faith is given. Wonder waking faith is given. You know, the children of Israel, let me show you something. Go to Exodus uh, 14. So we, I want you to see something as we, you know, circle around this area a little bit. The gift. Now watch this. <laughs> Verse 13. Then Moses said to, to Exodus 14, 13. Then Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Take your faith. Be firm and confident and undismayed and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today, right? For those Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again. When you're looking at this, you're thinking, you're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, what are you talking about? You're talking about ignorance. Watch what, we, what the Holy Spirit will, will, will say to us. <laughs> Wait and see. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. Right? So the Lord will fight for you. As long as Pastor Moses is saying this way, I, yeah, the Lord will fight for me. We even sing this song, you know, God is, will, will fight for me. God is the one. I want you to take note to what God said in verse 15. Many are in verse 14. The Egyptians are coming. There is a Red Sea in front. The Egyptians, those are oppressors. It's an oppressive system that wants you to remain under its tyrant. Rule, glory to God, that you can't come out. Now you are under it. It's Pharaoh. It's coming after you. It's coming after your children. It's coming after that. And the solution from God, look what he says, verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, Moses is saying to the children of Israel, the Lord will fight for you. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Why do you cry to me? How many times you go to church, it's time for intercession. People are saying, oh, Lord, if you could move. Lord, if you could stretch forth your hand and heal. If you, because it's about spiritual gift. Don't be ignorant. Why are you crying to me, Moses? Why do you cry to me? He was crying to God. Moses was, because God would not have said this. Why are you crying to me? See, there are things that we are asking God to heal. To some, it has been given the gift of healing. There are things that we are crying, oh God, if you could shift my this, if you could change my relationship with my kids, if you could. God says, I've given the, 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 the spirit of wisdom, glory to God. There is a gift of wisdom that is there. Are, are you pursuing after it? Are, are you going after it? Now you are crying to me. I've sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already brought the gift. If you are not careful long, these Egyptians will come and capture you. They will take you back. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with your ignorance, Lord. So arise, rise up in your finances. It has nothing to do with me why you are broke. It has nothing to do with me why, why you are sick. It has nothing to do with me why you're going through what you are going through. Stop crying to me. Look for the gift. And when you look for the gift, you submit to that gift. That gift is the anointing that will break the yoke and it will set you free. Moses, why are you crying to me? And churches worldwide, we are in the city. Ha, shanda, rabba, shanda, rabba, shanda. Lord, pour out your spirit. God says, I poured out my spirit. The Holy Spirit is already there. Glory to God. All you need to do, don't be ignorant. Pursue after spiritual gifts. Wake them out in your life. Glory to God. Manifest them wherever you pray for somebody who is sick. If they die, move on to the next person. In the name of Jesus, come out here. Glory to God. And if it doesn't work, go to the next person. Do the way. 
work the way, try the gifts. If you are crying out to me, you are asking me for a solution, you will drown because the Red Sea is in front of you. The Egyptians will come and they will attack you. We have been raised and we've been taught wrong. We've been, oh God, if you could move, oh God, if you could move from where? <laughs> he says about spiritual gifts, don't be ignorant. He moved 2,000 years ago. He carried the cross. He died on the cross. He was raised three days after. He went to heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of you, is inside of me until we rise up together and say, this is enough, devil. You are coming out of my finances. You are coming out of my house. You, we are passing the floor. We are speaking, and sitting down, holding our chin, crying. We are not weak. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Why are you crying to me? Hmm. Feel a little preach coming through. <laughs> Why do you cry to me? This is God. Tell the sons of Israel to move forward towards the Red Sea. You tell them, Moses, you are the solution. I am using it. Imagine if he was telling them, nah. Uh, it's Moses. Anyway, he doesn't even know how to talk. He, 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 you know, he, he, he's a stumbler. You know, some who could not even have followed him. <laughs> Glory to that's the summer, autumn, winter, spring. Ignorance of the gift. Because we want somebody eloquent to lead us. We want somebody who will talk like Obama. You know, we want somebody who will, you know, who, 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 who talks, who's eloquent. This one with their pigeon accent, what can they help me? Then the Egyptians comes and captures you because Moses is a stammer. Because the workings of God are not like our workings. The way God works is different, is separate. Why are you crying out to me? Why are you crying out? Tell the people. You tell the people. That's why it's very important. When you are not ignorant of the gift, you, pay, you, 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 you lay hold of the instructions that come your way. You lay hold of the instructions. When the instructions are coming out of the church, they, you are laying hold of that. Lord, how do I cooperate with this instruction? How do I tap into this instruction? Because the instruction is coming as a result of the gift. The Moses was, God did not talk to the children of Israel. He talked to the gift. Moses was the gift to them to deliver them. <laughs> he was the gift to take them out. Glory to God. And if you go um, a couple of um, texts after, before 13, verse 13, they were all complaining, were there no graves in Egypt? Yet they did not realize that Moses was their gift to take them out. Now, Pastor Moses, he, he himself is crying out to God. Let's find out. <laughs> Tell the sons of Israel to move forward towards the sea. <laughs> Does it make sense? Absolutely not. You see, when the gift is talking, what the gift says, it does not make sense. There was no wine in the wedding in Cana. The mother of Jesus says, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. The gift. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. It makes no sense. See, when we intellectualize Christianity, we intellectualize the things of God, we miss out on what God is trying to do in our life. We become ignorant. The gifts are spiritual. Spiritual instructions never make any sense at all. That's why they are spiritual. Watch what God says. As for you, <laughs> as for you, that's very simple. Lift up your staff. Stretch it out, your hand over the, the sea and divide it. What was the gift? The, the staff. Moses had the solution. It was in his hand. He was crying out to God, oh God, if you could move. That's sometimes our prayer. Oh Lord, he shandara, my shandara, move, Lord. And God said, uh uh, lift up your staff, your gift. Second uh, Timothy 1 6, there was chaos in the church in, in Ephesus. Timothy was the pastor of that church in Ephesus. You know, the solution from Paul, you know, however he called Timothy, Timothy, you know, let's pray, let's join our hands together. Ashanda, Ashanda, Lord, move, do something, Lord. You know, we have been first. No, Paul didn't say that. But this is what we do. We hide. He says, Timo, stay up, stay up, stay up the gift that is inside of you. Stay up. That is the solution against this thing. 
It is the gift inside of you. You stay it up. If you don't stay up what is inside of you, Timon, you are going to die. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. When you stay up that gift, it's going to counter what you are facing. The gift here, your road, Moses, stretch forth your road. That is the gift. That is the role. That was the gift. Imagine, does it make sense to stretch forth your, your road and the things open up? It never makes any sense. So when he stretched forth his road, the Red Sea opened. What gift was it there? The gift of working of miracles. There are times we need that gift to manifest in our lives. And God is telling us what to do. He says, do this. And I'm like, no. And then I start reading. You know, I start thinking, oh, Lord God, how will I? You know, at church today, I was looking at Luke 5. 17, Luke 5, 17, you know, we won't go there in, in closing. Luke 5, 17, the Bible says, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were there, they were there, they were with Jesus. It says the presence, the power of God was there to heal, to heal them. There was the gift of healing. It was there to heal them. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees were, were arguing, they were raising. Then all of a sudden, these four crazy men, they came, and they wanted to find a way to bring a paralyzed friend to Jesus. When they did not find that way, they climbed, they climbed up. They opened the ties of that roof. They dropped that man in front of Jesus. The presence of God was there to heal. The gift of healing was there. What gift is there? What gift is there? See, when we are ignorant, sometimes we can be closer to somebody on a plane in our church, and we don't know what is there. Then we don't hear. It requires us to pursue after God, to know God, and to, to celebrate even the gifts that are inside of us, the road that is inside of us, to stay it up. Because when you stay up what is inside of you, it's going to help the person next to you. It's going to cause a chain reaction. Then when we come together as God's children, greater testimony, greater manifestation of his glory, because we would have come to the revelation of what a true church is. This thing that many people are doing here, chasing after prophecy, chasing after this and that, that should not be our life as God's children. Our life is, if we are to chase after something, chase after spiritual gifts, chase after Jesus, to know him. When you come to the revelation of who Jesus is, you will even prophesy upon yourself. That says the Lord Lomza. You are a great man. You are anointed to do great things. You know, now you are speaking to yourself. You are singing to yourself in psalms and hymns. You begin to build yourself up. You are stirring something that is inside of you. When you go after Jesus, because no one can prophesy to you greater than Jesus. No one can give you a weight of knowledge greater than Jesus. No one can also connect you with the people that carry a road that will open that Red Sea for you. There's no need to be stuck. Whether it is in your finances, absolutely no need. Whether it is in your marriage, no need to be stuck. No, 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 no. Whether it's in healing, not anymore. We are the church of the living God. Father, I thank you. You are a great God. We cannot be stuck. No, it's for freedom that you created us. So Lord, I thank you. As I begin to pray for every person that has joined in today, Lord, I'm speaking for your glory and your power upon their lives. Heavenly Father, there are some that say, yeah, the Egyptians have been coming, but today they don't need to stretch for their road. They are turning against those Egyptians. <laughs> they will pursue, they will slay the enemy. I'm talking about, Father, people that have had the system cheat them. Lord, I'm praying, Father God, that let there be a reversal. Likom skele braka shika tarabaka hand. Dolokom skele braka shika taraba bosanda rabaka sende in Jesus' mighty name. I'm coming against every migraine in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank God there's just the anointing. I just feel like, you know, you know, there's these two sort of muscles at the back of your head. In the mighty name of Jesus, there's something that I'm feeling in Jesus' mighty name. The, the, the gift of healing is here. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for your healing power, your healing anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, Lokom Skele Brakahanda. Lord, as I stretch forth my hands, I thank you for the people that are joining in. Lord God, I pray, I pray, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, come against long lying sicknesses that have become stubborn. 
<laughs> stubborn in their bodies. Lord, I rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus. By the working of miracles, I speak to every organs, organs in your bodies in the mighty name of Jesus to be restored to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Lombro skele braka shika tarabaka hai ndolo kum skele braka shika tarabaka han ndol skeste rababu shika tarabaka han. New things, new things, new beginnings, new things, fresh things, greater anointings in the mighty name of Jesus. Supernatural breakthroughs, breakthroughs, you are breaking forth, entering into another realm in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed. I'm looking forward to greater testimony. Until we meet again, have a wonderful, glorious afternoon. Remember, don't be ignorant. The gifts are already there, you know, but you might need to pursue after them. You might need to dig deeper. See what is in your brother. See what is in your sister. Till we meet again, have a wonderful, glory to God, blessed day in Jesus' mighty name. Our host, take it away. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory.